The Frank Center Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frame Center Podcast, uh, where we're talking about all things framing, uh, all things art related on the South Shore, and you know, who knows what else we'll talk about. I'm Dave. And I'm Scott. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, today we have joining us Mr. Sean Goss. Back. Again, part two. Yeah, back for round two. Hello. Um, welcome to the podcast, Sean. <laughs> What's is, happening? Yeah, what's new? Yeah, not much, just working. Um, summer's not the busiest. Yeah, things are, things are a little quiet over at Goss Photo during the uh, the summer days. August. August Everybody's yeah. on vacation. Well, yeah. then when they get back, I'm sure you'll be busy with all the uh, yep. vacation photos and uh, this or that from uh, trips and things like that. So. And all yeah. the kids going back to school. Yes. Like, tons of pictures of kids getting on the school bus. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do a lot of those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Glad to see that's still a staple since uh, you know my childhood. <laughs> that's funny. That's one of the ones you see, uh, like you know, every everybody on Facebook, everybody on social media posting the first and the last. It's the only the, time the clothes the are still going to look as good when the people actually, you know, and the parents bought their kids those clothes. After that, it's going to be downhill from there. So <laughs> people know what to expect for Free Frame Friday, the first yeah. week oh, of yeah. September. That's, that's an easy one. Easy, <laughs> there you go. Easy yeah. one. September is easy. Free Frame Friday, pictures of kids going to school. Yeah, definitely easy. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it makes my life a lot easier for sure. Hey, well, at least there'll be new photos up there to steal, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, Keep an yeah. eye out, you know, Sean, you see some good ones, you know. You want to collaborate somehow with, uh, you know, the Goss Photo, Free Frame Friday. Uh, oh, for sure. We can definitely make that happen. There you go. That'll, that'll be nice. Rocking the, uh, rocking the Frame Center tie-dye, too. Speaking of, su- you know, summer attire. It's like, nice. It it's looks good, looks good on you, yeah. you know. Get yeah, a lot of compliments on the right Something over? other than black. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of compliments on that, yeah. little change, oh, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. The kids love it. The kids oh, yeah. was shocked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's this bring... person walking through our door? <laughs> Did you bring one bad f- back for her? No, not yet. Not but yet. I will. Yeah, I'll see yeah, if I can sure. get Tara in something other than a black T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, you know, a little goss photo, uh, you know. Uh, you know, Sean and Tara. You rock. got any merch that we can rep on there? I'm just <laughs> I can make some. There you go. Nice. We'll do a little crossover event there. That'll be nice. (laughs) Well, you haven't been totally, you know, non-busy. You helped us judge the uh, the Hanover Day show a couple about a month or so back. Yep. You know, Uh, that was a fun little show. We got what were there thirty pieces in there? No, it was over. We had I think it was final count was fifty five. Fifty five. Yeah. Not including the couple pieces you had to, to to show that you know why we had you as the judge. That's always good. Yeah. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it still is confidence. Nice. Well, any of those uh, pieces jump out at you that you can remember off of the uh, top of your head there? Uh, I like Nolan's. I've seen that one before, too, um, which I think Nolan won first place. He got first. Yeah. I believe, yeah, it was first place on, on, on that setup for the, uh, I think it was color photography or yep. photography on that one. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, Eva Cass's bag is that little thing sweet that she had. Which one was that? Uh, The three-dimensional piece? The one with the uh, kind of like oblong handle that was almost like kidney shaped and it was like red and tan. Yeah, that was, that was neat. Yeah. Those, she, she's always put together really cool pieces. Um, there's some good black and white stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. It's been a few weeks. True. Very true. No, I just in case. I was going to say, yeah. You've seen some more since then? Yeah. It's like somebody asking us that hasn't been here for three years. Do you remember the frame I put on my picture? No, <laughs> I don't know oh, that happens. <laughs> yeah, we got the uh, we got the other one coming up too. What's what's that? F- the the one we we're working with the Instagram, uh, the IG South Shore. IG South Shore. Yeah. Um, and you've worked with those guys for a while, or uh, I've worked with uh, Susan Hagstrom, and um, I worked with her a lot. And then uh, I know they came to try and put something together where I'm printing in your frame yep. for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, which will be a cool 
hopefully a good show. Yeah. Hoping we can get a good amount of people to do it. Well, that's good. There's like, like the control aspect of it that like right. we don't have we don't have to worry about. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You're we not could... you're you're dealing with the problems when people come in with things that are wrong size and like not formatted <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> one of my one of my good customers who already should know these things has come in with stuff the wrong size. So <laughs> I, I can't you fix it too often. They know you'll fix it. <laughs> Did we like I talked to her briefly about some ideas on that and where we is it going to be two different sizes or is it just one size? They might be doing two. Uh, like, maybe they're doing like eleven fourteen format. or a square and then um, maybe like a twelve by eighteen or something. Oh, yeah. kind of like how the outside the box used to be, where it was all one size, so it was more about That's, what the art was and not the different sizes being something that took away from everybody. So. I think that was the initial idea. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and, and Instagram is now not just for it's not just square formats. Uh, no, I think uh, it's like a four by five if you want to do something vertical. Yeah. Uh, and then if you want to put something horizontal, you have to like white box it, oh, and zoom yeah. it out, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that that one will be that should be fun. Yeah. I mean, and Kel's judging that one, right? Right. And yeah. Kel's judging it, and I think it's going to be at the brewery. Down yeah. The Is it Untold Brewery? Untold. Yep. Oh. Yeah. When's yeah. that? When's that happening? Then? I don't like a rough paper in front of me. Uh, a rough. Uh, I'm gonna you know. pull it out because Claude posted that one on Instagram the other ah, day. The, see? Uh, so I think we can. Uh, I did as well. Quickly uh, search the search the phone and uh, track that down. Who's gonna beat you? That's gonna. Uh oh. <laughs> uh-uh. That's yeah. I'm trying, but I'm finding all. I'm finding stuff about <laughs> your show on here. You know, Nancy Colella's show coming up. It is. September 10th, oh, okay. September 5 p.m., Untold Brewing. Jeez, a month away then, huh? Yep. Yeah, that's good. So, so, yeah, when, 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 the, when are all the frames getting done on that? September 9th. At your department? September uh, 9th. September yeah. 9th. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. the day before. Yeah, since we, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that that's all getting dropped off on the week. That we work best that, under pressure. That we know you, this. you, <laughs> Dina, Mark, oh, yeah, the- <laughs> Matt, Caleb are all off. Yeah, that, I, that's... <laughs> Probably how that's gonna shake. Blame the out. school yeah. system. I gotta go home and watch my children. I would imagine. I would <laughs> if, imagine that uh, that that's how it's gonna shake out. It's gonna be the last week in September. I mean, the last week in August that they could all get dropped off when we are a little understaffed. But yeah. if you need help assembling, <laughs> yeah. you can call me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it'll all shake out all right. Worst comes know? to worst, I'll stick the kid out back with his Nintendo Switch and I'll come in. It yeah. won't be a problem. <laughs> But that one should be fun. I think we're gonna have it'll. It should have like a nice uniform look. Is that group someone you like? Have you dealt with a lot of people from that group, or just Susan, or uh, just Susan for the most part? Yeah. Is yeah. there a theme that goes along with that one at all, or is it like just whatever subject matter you want? Like it's not like just South like Shore. it is all images of the South Shore then. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think they're calling it scenes of the South Shore. So. That would make sense then. You know, if it was you know. Because so the North Shore, we'd have problems. So, uh, if you've done, you've done a lot with Kel too, or uh, just a little bit. I think you guys initially sent Kel to me. Oh, really? Yeah. I, yeah. Um, for one of the shows he was doing. Yeah. I want to say you guys sent him down to me first. We send a lot of people your way, Sean. I don't know. It was either it was either <laughs> you guys or it was Hunts. Hunts might have sent him down too. Yeah. No. I mean, he. I. I communicate with him a bit i mean he does a lot of like stuff that's printed on like wood you know like a lot of like things yeah like he does wood. like the wood and the metal there's a lot of stuff like wood. he oh, does cool. great stuff i have one of his i have one of his pieces on metal and that he had mounted it with like the standoffs onto like a piece of like mm-hmm. a big piece of like driftwood is like a really interesting piece uh, it's cool. one of the few that I have that hang on the wall that don't have a frame around them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he, yeah, like he, yeah, he does some really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, he does some some uh, things. We did a, like a, uh, I think we did a like, what was it Black Friday sale type thing with him? Like where he had some yep. canvases, so we did like a couple set. Uh, Set frame sizes like you know, just like a black 16, and a white. 24. Yeah, no, these ones were big. These ones were uh, were bigger. I think they were like twenty thirties, maybe or. It might have been the images that were sixteen twenty four. Yeah. Because that's the that's the thing I remember when I first met him. Everything had to every, be sixteen twenty four. Yeah, <laughs> likes that format. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah. But he's a g- good guy. Good. Uh, he has a nice studio. He's down in Kennedy's, I think. I think so. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, um, his, I've been meaning to get over to his, his new space. I'd been to his space years ago when he was in Situate Harbor, but mm-hmm. he's got a good, he, I think he's got that uh, Situate uh, market cornered. Yeah. Oh, he does. <laughs> but, so that should be a fun one. I was uh, going back and forth with him the other day. I'm trying to get a, an address from him for a Free Frame Friday, uh, you know, uh, job that I have put together. And I, you know, calling in, uh, you know, Calling, you know, calling in the big guns. I've had to call in a lot of people for some addresses. I had to get one from you the other day. Yes, too, you Scott. did. Yeah. So we're working on, we're working on it. Expanding the uh, the influenced area the there. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go through the old yellow pages and stuff anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah. But uh, I mean, you used to helping a lot of people, mm-hmm. John, especially like uh, uh, speaking of Nolan. You know, from from what he was saying, you you got him. You were helping him out when he first was getting. Started yeah, when Nolan's, he dropped in. Nolan's like pretty new to photography, right? Yeah, only the last couple of years. He got um, started during COVID, right? He picked right. it up as a hobby. Yep. Yeah, and he's he's still young, so he has plenty of time. Yeah, but uh, he has a good eye for stuff. I kind of like. I don't want to say like mentors the wrong word for no, him, but like gave him like pointers, advice tips. On, yeah, advice on a, equipment, different things you can do, mm-hmm. editing tips, stuff yep. like that. Uh, a lot of storage tips, which is what a lot of people run into sure. when they first get into it, storing all your digital files and, like, how you're going to manage your workflow and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, because I went through his website after uh, we had our interview here from the Hanover Days thing yep. and uh, checked out his pieces. I mean, I know he specializes in a lot of the automotive shots, that, like, but then he's got yeah. the drone shots uh, from all his, you know, nature scenes and things right. like that. And they're, His drone stuff is cool. Like too. the overhead shot of the lighthouse straight down, it's not a view typically you, you see or, mm-hmm. you know, from – over jagged rocks that nobody can usually stand on to take a photograph because the waves are crashing up or anything. You can't usually get that angle unless you're on a boat, you know. Right. It's, uh, you know, yeah, the, interesting to see stuff from a different perspective than normal. And drones have, like, given people that ability. Right. Which is what's really cool. Yeah. Um, huh. Unless you crash them. Right? Then it's an expensive hobby. <laughs> I, think, I think Nolan actually lost one of his drones in the ocean oh. a few weeks ago. Really? Not only photographer, but pilot as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, hey, so what? So what? When you talk about the storage stuff, uh, Sean, what? What is like? What's What's the tip? I mean, that people are getting hung up on. I would imagine, like, since you can take like a thousand photographs right now, in you know minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. one of the problems that I see a lot of people do is like, if you're going to buy like a new laptop. Yeah. You know, like uh, Apple will offer like a MacBook Pro yep. with only 256 gigs worth of, like, flash storage. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the hard part with something like Apple in general is if you want to upgrade that storage, it ends up costing a lot. So a lot yep. of people will cut corners in that respect on the computer end, yep. but then have no place to store anything. And mm-hmm. if they're doing that, they're using either, like, external drives mm-hmm. that they have to drag around, yep. Yep. Uh, which makes things somewhat easy, but... If you have multiple of them, it can be a real pain. Yeah, yeah. If you don't um, label them or if you right, misplace you one, you, you're you, lost. You know, you know, you, you go somewhere and then, oh, you don't have it with you. Uh-huh. What are you going to do? Um, or you forget the cord that runs <laughs> between the two or, yeah. You know, so, like, your options are, you know, do you want to do that? Do you want to do some sort of cloud storage? Yeah, is um, cloud storage a better option or is it? Um, depends. I don't really do any cloud storage personally. Any, any um, reason? This is all, like, way out of my wheelhouse. Uh, with cloud storage, you're basically storing everything on somebody else's computer, and that just never sat right with me. Yeah, yeah, um, I can understand that. Yep. So, like, I use uh, NAS drives, which is, like, network attached st- attach storage, mm-hmm. um, and I use, like, backup drives, but I try and make redundant copies. The okay. hard part is, is I just buy a lot of storage. Yeah. So, like, my NAS drives are... 36 terabytes a piece yep. so like they'll hold more than i would need at any given time mm-hmm. right. and if i fill those it's been long enough that it's not like i'm buying a new drive every month yeah. mm-hmm. so, is that's a that's a big business right because i think i was listening to a podcast and they were talking about like how they're trying to like make like these 
like just their data storage centers and they're trying yeah. to do them like all green so they're doing them like i think it was like i think the thing i was listening to they're talking about in montana yeah and like you know so they're, they're using like what like a dam yeah like the dam so it's like water it was that water power right <laughs> and i mean those like the the server units that are gonna like store stuff for like google drive or any of those yeah I mean, you're talking 10-story buildings that oh are my dry God, yeah. and, you know, if you think you run in an AC all summer is a bad electric, bill. like these are, they they draw a ton of power to keep those yep. servers up and running, and they keep them up and running twenty four seven. So when they have some, like, so how many? I mean, like, opposed to like a compute, like how many computers worth of um, photographs are you storing? Would someone to be storing in something like that? And like, what's that? What's that cost wise? Like um, I monthly know cost, yearly cost? They usually like break it down like monthly. Like I know, like uh, Dropbox is like one that everybody uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so that's you, a storage thing too. I thought it yeah. was just for sending stuff. This oh no, is, like, you can I'm, use it I'm as storage like, and stuff like that. Um, and it all depends on like the how much you want to do. So like, I think it's like a hundred bucks a year. You get a terabyte worth of storage. Yeah, which for the average person and maybe the person who shoots casually yep you'd be able to get away with a terabyte worth of storage mm -hmm. um, and then when you fill it you can offload old stuff that you yep. might never touch again um, but if you're in the business of creating images and you're doing it frequently yep. or like a wedding photographer or something yep. like that you're gonna chew through that kind of storage like crazy oh sure um, so it's just a What's it's after a, a terabyte two, two terabytes, terabytes. <laughs> but I'm bummed. in stereo. Uh, after a terabyte, you go to like a petabyte, which is <laughs> a petabyte. Mm -hmm. nice. um, and like petabyte server racks are something I would love to have. But, you know, they're also ten grand. So right, like, exactly. Um, but that's so. What's something like that? Is that just like a gigantic computer? Is it essentially, and it stays uh, on there if you turn it off, or is it gonna like stay plugged in and like? Oh no, you can shut it down just like yep. you would. Like mm -hmm. a server, a server is basically just a bunch of hard drives put together yep. with a little computer that runs it, manages it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I mean, so this what, could be a four-hour podcast just on how hard drives. Yeah, are, which, like, <laughs> I'm sure that would be super interesting. <laughs> but but I mean, I just have I just have a couple basic questions. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like your options would be on the computer on an attached storage device, whether that's a portable hard drive or like yep. a desktop hard drive or a network storage that you keep at home or a cloud-based storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are like your main options and trying to choose the best one, it's gonna vary from person yeah, to person. Yeah, but then you also have to have more than one, right? Because what happens if something happens to that, right? So you uh, you come to multiple. me and I charge oh, your money to recover your hard drive. Um, <laughs> try to fix it, yeah. <laughs> That's the side hustle. Well, we huh? know because we were we were looking at um, some new uh, external hard drive type of uh, mm -hmm. things in, you know. Yeah, you'd want to look at like uh, for someone know, someone who knows much better than me, uh, <laughs> our our producer today, <laughs> uh, Claude suggested using the t you know using the two, um, you know, and I think it's to duplicate the duplicate the. Images so that if something was to happen to one of them, you know, what the house burns down, yeah. it's you know. yeah, so a master like, file somewhere. Um, yeah, or you could look at like an, a network one, which would plug into your router, so you could like wirelessly upload to it. Yeah, from anywhere. Yeah, then it becomes um, a localized cloud and storage. A lot of those. <laughs> so will, that's like kind of creating your own cloud storage. Yeah, it's like your own personal yeah. cloud. Yep. Um, but then, like anything you have, like you could probably get one that's big enough to also back up all the stuff, like for your regular business records that you have yep. as well. Mm. So like there's different ways to set it up. So like yep. our customer right. files for like when mm -hmm. we place orders so in case something right. ever happened to our main yeah, PC. And and that's why we go through a ton of storage at my shop because you know we deal with 3,000 people and all their pictures on top yeah. of yep. like my Well ever customer. since we started adding the photographs to all the orders, we, you know, <laughs> storage <laughs> the storage went way up, you know. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so you you keep, you hang on to the photographs for a lot of those people? Or you, um, you depends do it on what it is. Time? It yeah. depends on what it is. So, like, when we do, uh, I do a lot of, like, artwork reproduction. Yeah. And so, like, anything that I do, like, custom work to produce, yep. I'll usually keep. Yep. Um, if it's, oh, I just need a four by six picture of this. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, it stays in our server for a couple of weeks and then automatically kicks it out. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so it all depends how long I have it. All depends on how busy we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like in the middle of January, I could have a picture for three months yep. where 
during December, I might have something for two and a half weeks. If you got your system to automatically scram something as soon as right. it's been, you know, there for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. so, so how, do you, how do you handle that? So if I come in with a bunch of pictures and I'm, and, you know, you, you know, make copies or something for me, you hang on, you kind of have them for a month, do you end up sending the people, like, the digital files too, or is that, a, uh, if it's is that something, an add-on? So if it's something where you wanted me to, like, scan and produce images yeah. for you, like yeah. if you gave me hard copies and you wanted digital files or yeah. you wanted copies of them, mm-hmm. um, I would, no problem, send you, like, the digital files of yeah. them. Um, and you'd have the other the other print copy, but like that sort of stuff, I don't necessarily hold on to forever because yep. storage gets expensive. Right. Yep. So this would be um, like like something like you did for Josh Ford, where yep. he brought in his paintings, you shot them, digitized right. them, made them so he had a catalog available for himself, and then yeah. So like a lot of like the artwork reproduction customers that I do, mm-hmm. I have um, like on my network storage, like their name, the work we did, mm-hmm. so like the files that they have, and a lot of those will do multiple orders of one thing. Right. So, you know, they could call and say, hey, I need more, like four more of this one. Yeah. And I can look it up and find it and just print right from there. Exactly. Um, on top of that, I do give them the files as well. So in they case have a... something happens to my system. Exactly. Then, they, then there's another backup. Yep. And there you go. It's redundancy. Um, it's nothing wrong with having mm-hmm. something with that kind of, with that set up. Yep. But, yeah. And I mean, that's the same thing as, you know, like, Three years later, oh, do you guys have this frame that you guys made for me? Yeah. You know, like, we Luckily, run into that, like, oh, you made this picture for me a couple of years ago. Do you still have it? Depends on what it is. Yeah. yeah. And they say a couple of years ago, and you look back, and it's 2014. Right. <laughs> that does happen a lot. Um, a couple of years ago, as I get older, seems to be longer and longer. Yeah. You know, a couple of years ago is still to that, uh, 2010. I was yeah. just going to say, yeah. <laughs> You know, like, I, I remember when Finding Nemo came out pretty well, so, like, yeah. <laughs> that seems like a few years ago, but no, it was, like, 18. Yeah, yeah. Like, right? I know. It's scary. Yeah. I still think the 90s are, you know, 10 years ago. They're not. Um, but. Oh, yeah. You know, it's giving you more time to, you know, look at photographs. Yeah, mm-hmm. qualify yourself as a judge. You know, now we have your show. I was gonna uh, say, yeah, you got your own up. pieces all put together there now. Yep, a little transition from the uh, from the judging to the, you know an actual somewhat of a solo a solo show over here. Yep. Um, and yeah. is there uh, any rhyme or reason to what pieces you decided to put up? Yeah, or? any theme going on there, or just kind of what you want to display? Kind of a nice mix of your pieces. Uh, it's just a good mix. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the landscape stuff for the wildlife stuff is older for the most part. Sure. Um, where the four by five like portrait work is what I've been working on lately. Yeah. Is that um, what the the wall of the portraits is that? Uh, yep. Those are all a shot. Se- just a series. A series um, you're working on, or is that? Yeah, there's like sort of a a theme to it. Yeah. But, I mean, it's all like a fine art headshot that is emotional and powerful, but exactly. all shot with four by five film on the mm-hmm. old school camera where you pull the blanket over your head so you can focus. And oh, really? The old, yeah. the old hood and flash powder? No flash powder. No flash powder? I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, where, you know, where are you getting the, for, for the, uh, shoots like that, where you find, find the, uh, the, su- the subjects? Uh, anybody who's interested. Yeah. Yep. Or if, like, um, you know, like one, two of those people on the wall are, like, friends of mine. Yep. Um, and that's sort of like where it started. It was like, oh, hey, I want to try this. Yep. And then from taking their picture, it moved on to like, oh, like let's find other people who might be interested. In it. Sure. Um, it's a great grouping. It looks like it's almost like it was set up as a, a series, even if you're saying it's it's split. It's. I mean, they're all taken, you know, sometimes months apart. Mm-hmm. So there's not really a focus but like the style that i shoot them in is pretty much the same yeah style, most of it look because um, you got some straight on then you got the guy with the beard and the three-quarter profile yep. shot which i like it's almost all shadow which is highlights popping well, on we, that one i did a few shots of him the hard part was is you know like he made a goofy face when he was facing me straight on so like <laughs> <laughs> look away <laughs> yeah but uh it's funny because the one actually uh, uh the girl with the 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 makeup running on her face and yep. then the, the shawl there was something about it that was i'm like why does this shot look like i've seen it before and it, it finally struck me it was the uh the old cover they used to use for national geographic from like 1985 oh, the, woman uh, in, um, the the girl with the green eyes yes um, it's the eyes that's what kept hitting me was her eyes in that mm-hmm. shot was that same kind of intense look even in though it's in that black and white 
medium, it, it's still, you know. Right, and I think that might be the only one where someone's actually making, like, eye contact with me as mm-hmm. well. Um, yeah, the other ones are kind of like almost in a semi head up tilt or head up you know. or like looking away or looking off to the side. Mm-hmm. Looking up. Um, one of the things when you're shooting with like the four by five, and I'm not using strobes or anything like that, mm-hmm. is that it takes a while to actually like capture that image. So they have to it has you can't to be, move, right? They have to be still. Yeah, so, like, you have to make something. Yeah, it has to be like a position they can hold. Um, and for the most part, uh, the is the one that was like looking straight on. She was the only one that could like look like straight on without like staring breaking contest, into yeah. laughter or like something like that. So. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, because I remember that's how it used to be with the old the old photos. Like you mm-hmm. could move for like what was it? It's over a minute, right? That you gotta. Uh, sometimes these are you know like fifteenth of a second. Sometimes maybe thirtieth of a second. Oh, okay. So it's not you that know. bad. But no, no, like, no, not, not like the old ones where it's like you can't. No, because I'm, I'm shooting these pretty wide open. That's why like, nobody used to smile in the old photos. It's like, because right. you can't hold it in the exact same position for that long. Mm-hmm. So, You're with the movie references today. Hey, it's... A million it's... Ways to Die in the West. <laughs> Thank you. See, again, he gets me. <laughs> I'm a movie nerd. It happens. <laughs> yeah. But no, because again, that's, that's how... That's, how I know about it again is you know movie I mean, and cinema. <laughs> yeah, and like we're like I'm how using, accurate uh, that is. Yeah. It's pretty accurate. So yeah. like um, I'm using a higher speed film than would have been available back then. Sure. So true, like true, true. the amount of time it takes to capture the image is a lot like, less than it would have been a hundred years ago. It's like silver nitrate or something along those mm-hmm. lines, that kind of stuff. Template, you know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like daguerreotypes, where you're painting it onto the <laughs> the thing, then you have to develop it right away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would love to get into like tin type stuff, but it's just a lot of work. It is, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's involved. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of chemicals. I mean, not that I don't deal with them every day anyway. True. But just but. adding to it is just more. There's just more you need. More. So, I, I already have to like schedule time to do anything. The tin. So like, it's just more to schedule. And sure. More to be, on top of. Uh-uh. The tin, the tin type. So we just we hung a bunch of those down in Island Creek mm-hmm. um, when, like, when me and Mike were, uh, like, like, you know, helping out on that remodel down there when they yep. took over the Windsor House. And th- those are kind of like those are interesting. But these ones were mostly small. Yeah, they, like uh, most but, of them would be up to like maybe an eight by ten. And it's just part. what it's just to try to look like a like an old like type of. It kind of has like an old like negative type of feel to it so they from an unexperienced. Uh, were they real ones or were they reproduction ones? I have no no no. These ones were like current shots done on the like okay done as yeah. The there's there's some people who still do them. Like uh, the camera that I have out with those portraits, yeah. you'd be able to do a tin type on those. Yeah, mm. uh, with the right plate holder. Mm-hmm. But what happens is basically you take your piece of metal, you paint it with the chemistry, mm-hmm. then you have to shoot it. Mm-hmm. And then develop it right away. Yeah, there's no time in between. So like, there's no like with the with like the black and white film I use, I can shoot it and I can develop it a week later. It doesn't yeah, really right. Matter, you know, so like, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking not... these ones were like things that they had as real photographs, and then they yep. then they just turned them into they kind of transferred them. Did like the metal printing and yeah. like yeah, you can do that as well and sort of like fake a tin type. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know, and there's different types of metal printing that you can do, whether or not you have, like, a white base or you mm-hmm. have, like, the raw metal base, which will give it even more of that look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you get that, like, shimmer metal kind of... These ones have, like, there. a sepia type of tone. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. A the look age to look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they probably... They might have, like, reproduced, like, to give it the old look versus, yeah. like, finding old ones, which we get a lot of the old ones from different like history like town historical societies and stuff when they want to like copy things and stuff like that yeah oh, you're doing a lot of a lot of reproductions for the uh for the historical societies different ones um yeah, yeah we run into i did a bunch for rockland i did a bunch for uh i want to say situate brought us a bunch too yeah we've had mm-hmm. a few different towns yeah like, we're framing years. a bunch of a bunch of maps like that sort of thing like you know mm-hmm. a lot of towns are doing re- refits on you know kind of br- you know, changing up their offices and re- reestablishing what they want to, you know, have put up. And so some have been closed long enough; no one remembers what it looks like. So There's also that too. Up when yeah. you go back in, it's all different. Mm-hmm. So those cameras that are in there are actually active. I thought they were all. Uh... Uh, most of the ones that are out there work. Yeah. Uh, the old Polaroid. The old one. Polaroid. I was wondering about that one. Yeah. Uh, you can't. Well, if you can find the film, it's way too expensive. So don't <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Um, Not cost effective to use. Yeah. I, I think a pack of ten was selling for like two hundred bucks. Oh, is that all? Like, 
and they're not amazing. Like. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you miss the sensation of, you know, making it dry that actually did nothing for it, that didn't help it accelerate it at all. Or <laughs> yeah, don't shake it. It's yeah. a Polaroid picture. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it's a myth. But, uh, I mean, talking about, like, you know, shutter speeds and development speeds and things along those lines, we you were talking to me about the uh, the waterfall shots that you had mm-hmm. out there and getting those. You said you did a longer exposure on those to... Yep. To, to capture what's the difference between the, the longer exposure on something like that than just a single click you know um it's i mean it can all be tied back into like the portraits as well where anything that moves is going to blur right like the water so, you can see it's got that clouded kind of almost looks like right a cloud and look. like there's a few of the trees with like the wind blowing you know the leaves aren't all like pristine and, and like clean. frozen mm-hmm. so like the the big thing with that is you just you want a tripod you want yeah, you can't hold that, and, right. you know, because it's gonna, everything mm, will be blurry, you know. <laughs> so, like, since the water's moving and it gives it that sort of like silky, dreamy effect. Okay, so that's where this is an effect versus a, you know, just a crisp image kind of right. setup, right? Okay. Yeah, and that's like the the big, the wave breaking. It kind of gives that sense of motion. Sure, because I know we also get the the people that bring us in those ones from like the desert where they do the night sky shots, and those have to be on a long exposure to. Those are on right. like a long exposure or multiple exposures put together. Right. Um, I never got too into astrophotography. Uh-huh. There was like too much software, and I don't. Sure. I want to sit at a computer as little as possible. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. But I know they'll like take like twenty images or a hundred images or two hundred and fifty images, and like mm-hmm. they have software that will like read like, com- and like compile and like change where they right because if the exposure is long enough. Stars just turn move. into a circle, right? Oh, in the sky, really? Because, a circle, huh? Yeah, the Earth's spinning. Hmm. So, like, as you spin around, the clouds and everything. Oh, you mean there. they're going to turn like like a streak effect? Right. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. I, mean, I was waiting for like a. Mm. No, <laughs> like, if, you leave, if you leave it long enough, though, it'll look like basically like a streak rainbow like, across the sky, nice. like, all the way across. Yeah. Um, we used to do some of that. Like, it's tougher with digital because like the cameras will eat the batteries up if you try to oh, have long sure. enough exposure. But like in, in old film camera, when I lived out west, we used to just set them in the middle of the field, like go home, cook dinner, hang out for eight, eight hours, go back, pick them up in the middle of the night. Hmm. You know, like go from like essentially once it gets dark and then pick them up at like six in the morning. Awesome, yeah. Uh, That's right. You were you were out west too for a while. So what is that where the nature shots are? For, like are those, are those from... Yeah, the deer one you were telling me about. Was... So the deer is in uh, Texas, yeah. uh, Kerrville, Texas. I was out there. That's actually one of the more recent like wildlife oh, shots right. that I've taken. That yeah. was it's a great shot. Uh, four years ago. Pre- um, preference? Wildlife? Portraits? Cars? Um, probably Recently, it's probably been like race cars and portraits. Yep. Um, you know, landscape stuff comes around when I'm not around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you've seen it all already. I, I've shot stuff around here for so long, and mm-hmm. I see it. I was gonna say you must long. Like develop it all day long right. too. Like Duxbury <laughs> like, Bridge. And... Yeah, I mean, I've never, <laughs> you know, I've, I've only seen a couple. I've of never seen Powder Point Bridge from this angle. It's but, funny, um, you know, like so. A lot of the stuff around here, I work with so many different photographers or people like coming up and getting into it, that the scenery around here I see so much that I don't feel compelled to like go create something again Mm -hmm. or i've seen it enough that it's like eh, it's just you know it's like not that it i don't want to like discredit it by any means no 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 no. as far as like my interest in like creating images there's no spark anymore (laughs) right like of like the ocean around here and stuff occasionally i might like go out and like get something cool but like lighting or atmosphere might change how it looks right You know, like, I know, like, a lot of people that were talking to me today because it's, like, the last super moon of the year. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, um... <laughs> See, you're, t- you're tuned into that, huh? So everyone's getting prepared. Uh, everybody's to been asking me about moon. it. Like, uh, you know, like, oh, like, how do we do it? Like, what do we want to use? Like, if anybody wants to shoot the super moon, it's probably about ISO 400, 80th of a second at F8, and then work from there on your settings <laughs> to get it right. Um, and a really long lens. Yes. Um, yes. The iPhone camera will not do. No. no I tried. It did not work. <laughs> but um, <laughs> especially while driving. <laughs> you know. So like, if I if I do shoot around here, I try and keep things like sort of not as noticeable. Like the large ocean out there is Brant Rock, mm-hmm. but it's not 
noticeably Grant Rock. Like, you know, right. Like the, the, the sub towers and stuff aren't in there. Right. There's no um, identifying landmark in it that, you know. Yeah, you want the ocean to be anywhere, right? So right. That, so exactly. That, yeah. So anyone can relate, right? Yeah. I mean, that. it's all rocky, so it's definitely New England. But, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd love to walk barefoot across that stone pebble. That'd be of great. Of course, that's, that's mine to beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah, so, like, I don't, I probably stick to a lot of, like, the cars and the people, like, as of late. Um, sure. I shoot a lot of weddings. I enjoy shooting weddings. Yeah, know, it's a good time. Probably one of the few that, like, actually enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if you can, you know, if it's a nice positive energy and good time and people aren't sullen. And <laughs> and it's it's a challenge, which is what's nice. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I like about it. Like, I don't, it, they don't stress me out like they do with a lot of people because there's, sure. there's a lot of, like, there's obviously, like, pressure from the day. Mm-hmm. But um, I like to use that sort of pressure that's created to actually create something. Sure. Rather than, like, let it, like, eat you up, which mm-hmm. is what's kind of cool about it. Yeah, um, even if the place is probably at the same location, same venue. People are different. People are different. Their colors are different. They're, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, this person had red and white. This person had blue and yellow. This person had, you know. Yep. So you get that situation. You get the different groups of people, how large the wedding is. You know? Yeah. So that, that always changes it up, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's a little different than doing something static. Exactly, yeah. Hmm. What about chil- children's portraits? <laughs> First day of Not, school, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, are you are you your guy? Your, uh, you got one of those coming up, or? Oh yeah, August thirty first. <laughs> nice school bus and everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> over or like a, a little overproduced. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, there there, there will definitely be like an overproduced picture of it. I'm sure. Or like, it'll it'll be one of the few times I actually bring a camera back to my house. Like yeah. That. No, they usually stay in at the uh, yeah. Try to keep keep them away from home. Uh, I have a lot of cats and <laughs> and a dog and animal hair. And it's like kind of funny how they don't really you know work with art, do it? <laughs> no, that's why I, I don't had, paint watercolors anymore. I had a, a a large format printer and everything set up at my house uh, a while back to try and like produce some work like over Christmas and like be home a little bit more and like do that. And then like a cat kept sleeping on the. Printer I was gonna say, you mean it, the warming so, bed that yeah. the uh, cat took that as? A <laughs> yeah, and, like there's nothing like trying to clean cat hair out of a print. Head. Oh it's gosh, not, it's not fun. You so, blow a whole can of air just trying to move one hair. Um, so I try and like keep that like separate, just like keep home home work work yeah and, um you have for, a controlled environment at work though so right i mean at home i do have like i have uh probably my favorite camera i've bought in the last like 10 years is my gopro oh really um because i take it everywhere it's um, true yeah you can any situation you can kind of go to the beach you can just keep it on your wrist it gets wet doesn't matter mm-hmm. um you know like go to water Whiz or anything like that. <laughs> there you like, go yeah yeah you know it's 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 a great camera to like kick around with and not have to worry about it yeah right um Oop, i slipped out of my hand right you know <laughs> you know as, as long as it doesn't sink to the bottom of something i can't swim down it's not a big deal <laughs> yeah i'm surprised those aren't like an, like basically everywhere at this point like i kind of think i feel like everything is everything is almost like recorded everything's like, recorded everybody has the phone um i think with like the gopros and stuff i think a lot of people buy them and don't use them yeah, yeah. Uh, at least not I, properly. Anyway. I mean, I had my GoPros for a long time before I actually started using them for still pictures. Mm-hmm. And once I did, I was like, oh, these files are actually like, pretty nice to pretty work decent, with. Like, yeah. they're not bad. Yeah. And, um, so the GoPros, aren't, it's not, it, it has like a camera camera and like a video setting? Is yep. that, you know? Yeah, I think like the one I have is like 20 or 18 megapixels. Hmm. Can you fine. just pull stills out of the video too or no? You can, but video since it's motion and mm. uh, the images you would pull are never that sharp. Okay. And the files aren't too big. So, so you're like, kind of giving up the clarity. For you're giving up like the clarity continue. and like the ability to blow something up if you pull an image from... From video. From video. Yeah. For most people, it probably doesn't matter because it'll just look, they'll look at it on the phone. Yeah. Um, right. You know, but if you want to, if you ever want to like print any of it or something yep. like that, um, you know, that's that's my background is printing. So like yep. everything yeah. I like photograph, I always have that like in the back of my mind. Like, oh, if you want to like create something out yep. of this, like, you know, will it be able to enlarge? Will it be able to any of that sort of stuff? Um, but like the the GoPros are cool because it. It takes you back to like the simplicity of, like, almost like the old disposable cameras, 
You know, they're not designed to, like, review your pictures and yeah. look and make sure you got the right thing right away. Yeah. You just kind of like, oh, this is interesting, take a picture, you know, and then you deal with it later. Right, um, right. So it, it almost brings it back to that. It does have a screen so you can see what you're taking a picture of. A minute like, image of it, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it gives you that sort of, like... Oh, good, my thumb wasn't on it. <laughs> but it lets you, like, be in the moment versus worrying about A, B, C, and D. Which, gotcha. you know, like... The, if you're taking pictures with your phone, it's like, oh, you take a picture. It's like, oh, well, now i got to post it to Instagram. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go flip through this. And then, oh, oh, you wanted something from me? Okay, we'll go back. Like, mm. I'll put this away. You know, like, it doesn't it doesn't allow you, like, to, like, get out of that when you're doing something. Fun. Sure, yeah. Is it a yeah. simple transition to, to, like, so if you shoot something with the GoPro and you want to post it onto your Instagram or this and that, and is it, like, how's that work? Because um, I think we have a GoPro. I don't know if we, you, you know. Yeah, they're small know. and compact, which is great. So it I makes it a good travel I don't know how much right? we use it. You know? See, they, people buy them and don't use yeah. them. Yeah. Well, I think that, but, um, <laughs> think that, that might the, be uh, the case. I'm, so I'm, they, do have have a, something. they have an app, so you can, like, have it automatically, like, go to your phone. Oh, okay. Yep. So, um, yeah. you know, like... They'll sync up when the phone's on and stuff like that. Or, like, I just do it on a memory card, so then, you know, yeah. when I get home, I throw it on a computer and deal with it then. Yep. Um, How much storage does that stuff eat up? I have it's video. Is that a if lot? You, video eats up a ton of space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think a 128 gig memory card is, like, an hour and a half of, like, 5K footage yeah. from a GoPro. So it eats it up quick. I mean, maybe that's why people aren't using them as much, right? Could be. Cause or, like, but people also don't associate a GoPro with a still photo. No, yeah, they think of action shots taped you know, to a like, helmet, you know, while someone's skateboarding off a right. ramp kind of situation more, or a river rafting. Or, and that's, you know. how they like, that's how they marketed those. Companies. Exactly. Um, and I found, it, I found it better for me, anyway, to use it just as a point-and-shoot camera. So you think it'd be good for, like, a good vacation camera where it's oh, small, absolutely. durable, and you can use it for pretty much anything yep. in yeah, almost every situation? There's no zoom or anything to it. But True, yeah. But, like, eh. you know, one minute you're riding the roller coaster with the kids at Disney World, next time you're taking a picture with them next to their favorite Disney character, that kind of thing. You right. Know, that kind of, so. Yeah, I just have it, like, on a little wrist strap and I just yeah. around with it. It's easy. Like you said, because it's not clunky. The size is relatively mm-hmm. small, and it's durable. So. Yep. Yeah, it can be banged around. It's no biggie. Nice. Yeah, maybe we'll have you come over, give some lessons, yeah? <laughs> I know, you guys got the GoPro, what, like six months ago? Yeah, I don't. I, I think we used it maybe a couple times. Claude? Yeah, we used it until like February. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. something about, I'm like the only one who has the memory thing. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's, yeah it's we'll figure that, we'll figure that out. We're going to start producing Go, GoPro videos. I'm getting one of those helmets. I'm gonna, I'm we we'll strap it to the saw blade, that. so as you do like yeah. a cut, you know, yeah. you get a you know, action <laughs> shot of the, you know. You could do it. They have plenty of grip. They have plenty of grips. You can buy like a whole pack of them on Amazon What's for twenty five bucks. What's a grip? What? All like the different like holders and stuff to like mount them yeah. everywhere. Mm-hmm. So like you could set one up, so we could actually put it up on top of that shelf right there and angle it at this, and we could actually record each one of these with mm-hmm. it and use it for that. So we had a. Put it on the ceiling. Like right ceiling there. tile, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you have a good angle shot. Yeah, it, the downward angle, you know, it gets rid of, like, any of this. Yeah. Oh, what are you talking about? That's what they're going the beard out for. Yeah. Gets rid of the double chin. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, more footage of the podcast. They get this GoPro set up, you know. When you come back for a, 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 number three, number your, three. your, your third, your third uh, visit, we'll have you set up the GoPro first. Yeah. Hey, anytime. <laughs> I'll do it. Sounds good. Sounds good. So how do you, uh, so when you have a, a collection of those photographs or when you're entering things, what do you just find, you know, what's your, what's your, what's your go-to for deciding on? Uh, for like entering for putting, a yeah, show? Yeah, for putting or? it together. Are you thinking of that show as like uh, a, about how everything transitions or are you thinking of it as, oh, I got this one framed, so I'm going to use that? I mean, there's or, definitely some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or you, you know. I took apart a couple frames to put like the yeah. the coyote and stuff uh, was framed. The the access deer wasn't. Yep. Um, but the picture that was in that frame is old and is bored of looking at it. So. Yeah. Good <laughs> um, excuse to freshen things up. Yeah. Yeah, and I try and pick out stuff like that I like, and generally other people like it. Yep. When I do that, so like that works out well. Um, but there's, I didn't really have a rhyme or reason to it. It yep. was 
because I wasn't creating a show from yep. nothing. Like, I wasn't doing anything, like, themed or something yep. like that. If yeah, there was, like, a theme to it, obviously, it, like, picks stuff out that yep. sort of, like, resembles that theme. Um, but on the topic of storage, mine is a little disorganized for some of the yep. other stuff, too. So <laughs> it took me a while to, like, find different ones, and then I kind of, like, figured, like, what would look to good together yeah, yeah. Like, okay. well because that one wall like i said it kind of fills that whole space and just looks like it's meant to be together which is great yeah and that's like a project i've been working on over like the last couple of years like slowly so like all those files were all like available to me like mm. i had a you know like all the scans and stuff from the negatives were easily accessible and it's something i've been meaning to kind of like put together with some of those, and I just haven't. Like, the frames that they're in, I think I've had for two years. And sure. just never got around to actually putting them together. Mm -hmm. So this allowed me to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then when stuff goes back, I'll probably freshen up my space with them as yeah. well. But that's um, you, you like the thinner thinner profile metal frame versus um, a wider frame on your pieces, right? Not particularly. No? Uh, you use that studio 27701 right See, i like that frame a lot like that's a good one yeah nice little um, step in the front right yeah that's a really good frame the metals actually came from doing a lot of the shows years ago mm -hmm. because they're durable mm -hmm. uh so like if they get like nicked or scratched i just remember before i started working with you guys a lot i had you frame two of my flower shots mm -hmm. And, you know, like, they were museum glass, A-ply mats. Like, yep. Those that stuff like, for the shows. You know, they were, like, nice, like, Larson mm -hmm. frames. <laughs> and there's a huge chunk missing out of one of them because of course, it got hit. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, well, that's a $150 piece of molding. That is now trash. So right, because like, there's no fixing that. There's no So, like, the metals up. worked really well for doing shows because, one, you can switch the pieces out pretty easily. Yes. Uh, without having to cut backing paper. Just and all remove the single side, slide it out. Um, yeah. Take the spring clips out first so you don't crack the glass. Usually a good step. A lot of people skip that one. Well, when you're working with a 40 inch piece of like reflection free glass. Yeah. Like, you don't want to buy that twice. New yeah. um, fingerprints. Mm. Yeah, because most of those shows have like the disclaimer too, right? Like, yeah. Anything happens to your work while well, we have it. Right. Too bad. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it's kind of surprising that, you know, some of the, how some of this stuff is handled. Right. behind the scenes in in some of the art associations but mm -hmm. you know i mean no fault of theirs i mean you're dealing with mainly volunteers but right. i think that's in my estimate of my mind i think that's one of the benefits has come out of like the you know if, you know so you're not like bringing in like physical pieces and then having them rejected mm -hmm. and then you know picking it up you're damaged but like so right. there's less artwork to <laughs> yeah. be handled gives people the opportunity to kind of spend a little bit more on one piece because you know you're, you got your digital uh, submission in. Right. Yep. You know, going from 550 people who need prints and frames, though, down to 30 is always rough. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's <laughs> a, but what are you going to do? Um, at least, yeah. like, you know, like, I'm everybody... I'm trying to find the positive of it. Well, know. everybody who's getting that work done is happy with it. That's yep. the nice part. You know, it's it, some... A lot of people will enter shows, like, on a whim. Mm hmm and even if it's just like, you know, they like come up and grab like a 16 by 20 ready made and yep. like throw a mat in it and like tape it in. It's like, all right, well, you're still into it for 60, 70 bucks. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it might be something they just threw together because why not? Right. You know, so like spending 60 or 70 dollars on a why not right now is always a little bit tougher than, you know, like, oh, I got in, so I'm going to. Yep. do this piece right, right because exactly. now it now it is a show piece than a potential show piece right. so like that makes a big difference yeah there's things to you know put in like i would always recommend like ar glass over museum glass if you know it's going into show because it's a little more durable a little easier mm -hmm. to clean yeah the uv protection drops but it's only going to be up for what a couple weeks to a month usually for a show and it still doesn't even go. drop that much. No, like, it's, it's 20%. It's 99 yeah. down to 79. So it's still very durable, but also cost is a little less, but it still has the look of the museum glass. And that, that makes a difference. And that's when everybody's like, well, it's going to show. I'm like, and I want museum. I'm like, well, eh, you can go with it. But, you know, there are, like you said, liability issues with uh, multiple people handling, cleaning it, and setting it up like that. I so. mean, even with a nice microfiber cloth, a fingerprint is yeah. still a pain to get off. Exactly, you got to buff that thing like crazy. You putting in stuff in a lot of the the local art associations too, a lot, a lot of shows. Or uh, I haven't been just because I haven't produced that much. Yeah. Other than like the portrait work and weddings. Yeah. yeah. What about um, the iPhone show down in Plymouth? 
Jack Phenography? Yeah, a whole art show, a whole photo- you, uh, I know, yeah. I know uh, I've printed stuff for that so yeah. far. Um, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever actually, like, taken a picture with my iPhone of, like, oh, this is, like, a cool scene. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, oh, I'm driving, and that's, like, a pretty sweet rainbow. It's, like, it's not like... Um, well, what is most of the stuff that's coming into the store? Is it most? Of the, is the majority of people's photographs coming off of phones? Yeah. A, a good amount. Um, one of the things that's sort of transitioned in photography is you have a lot of the people who are really, really into it mm-hmm. are Instagram photographers spending, yep. spending money on, like, high-resolution cameras to lower your resolution and put on Instagram. Um, <laughs> All right, you're losing. You're losing me again. I think we tried to cover it in resolution. Like, so how? I thought you had to have a high resolution for the photograph to be good. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You can take a good. You can take a good photo with anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have like now, like you have people who will zoom a picture up to a hundred percent to make mm-hmm. sure, like, oh, like every pore is like perfectly in focus and there's no mm-hmm. pixelation around a pore, but you're actually looking at a pore on a waist up shot of a person and no one would ever actually see that you're yeah. right yeah um so like the cameras can do way beyond what our eyes will ever capture mm-hmm. um you know the big thing with resolution is if you're going to be cropping it in or blowing it up mm-hmm. um the resolution that it takes to produce an image that looks good on a phone or a computer screen isn't that high mm-hmm. so you don't necessarily need a lot of the gear to yeah, when, do that yes i when uh yeah, you know, like everything when it comes over, is it gen? It's like seventy-two, or is that like is that like a standard? Uh, seventy-two is like your standard internet resolution, resolution. for like um, pictures that you'd see on like a website, something. But like that. But if you're printing something, is it what is it like three hundred? Three hundred DPI is okay. like a pretty good, like average resolution. If you so my limited uh, you know knowledge of stealing people's pictures off of uh, Facebook and whatnot it comes off on like 72 and then when I print it I got to change it to 300 yeah you can yeah you don't have to you don't have to um, I mean it because the the dots per inch is also gonna depend on the dimensions the pixel dimensions All right so like you could have 72 dpi at a thousand by a thousand right mm. so now and let's say that thousand by a thousand equates to two inches. Mm-hmm. So like, All right. <laughs> you have a thousand by a thousand, and it's seventy-two DPI. If you make that smaller and you make it five hundred by five hundred, now it's one hundred and fifty DPI mm-hmm. at five hundred by five hundred. So like resolution and dimensions sort of like play onto each other. Mm-hmm. Just upping the resolution to three hundred DPI doesn't necessarily make anything better sometimes. Okay. And sometimes it's better to print at a lower resolution because it won't be as noticeably pixelated. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, like any of like the contrast areas where pixelation would happen might be a little bit smoother if you print it at let's say 150 DPI versus 300 DPI. Hmm. Um, and like your contrast transitions might be a little softer. Mm-hmm. So like if you have something that's super pixelated at 300 DPI, any print it, it's going to be super pixelated. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you lower your resolution to maybe 100 DPI at the same dimensions probably won't look as pixelated when it's printed hmm. really? or at least it'll be smoother you know so what would the benefit of like so why, why even go to a higher dpi For um <laughs> large scale right i mean you would do like large scale printing so like every every camera is going to have like a native mm-hmm. when you're pulling stuff from the internet it's all whatever yeah that site is okay. compressing it too <laughs> but like so like uh most cameras today are producing a 16 by 24 at 300 mm-hmm. dpi so anything from a 4 by 6 up to a 16 by 24 at 300 dpi there'll be no discernible quality difference yeah like in your pixelation in your line so it's only when you get over that size that like the dpi will start mm-hmm. to drop mm-hmm. and it's a long time before you even get to like a noticeable amount yep. by the human eye, anyway. Hmm. So when, when someone wants you to blow up their iPhone picture to front, like twenty four thirty six, yeah, you can do it if the picture has like good contrast and everything. Yep. And they haven't and, and, it and they haven't zoomed in on cropped. The iPhone. You yeah, know, yeah. if you try and zoom in on a bird on the iPhone oh, and then want to print that big, you know, yeah. you're looking at a file that's maybe three inches yeah. at three hundred dpi. <laughs> so when yeah. you start blowing it up bigger than that, right, that's where right. it like, comes into play. Gotcha. You get a lot of that, or. Yes. <laughs> Happens you've, a lot. You've, perfe- you've perfected explaining why that's not going to work out well? Or? 
Uh, it's basically like trying to make a poster out of a postage stamp. Yeah. You know, like you're. That's a good example. You're not. Think. You're not increasing any resolution. You're just stretching it. Yeah. Right. So like anything that's going to be a fine line is going to blur. Yeah. Um, there are some softwares that help mm -hmm. with quotation marks around it. Yeah. Um, sometimes they work really well. It depends on the image, and it's really like an image by image basis. Yeah. But, uh, what about all the filters on, like, you know, like Instagram and... Uh, the Instagram ones, well, Instagram's going to compress your file anyway when you put them up there. So, like, trying to print anything off Instagram, you get what you get. Yeah. Um, and you can usually get, I mean, like, 5 by 5s and stuff yeah. work fine. You know, yeah. it's not a, it, you know, up to maybe, like, a 8 by 8 You're in, like, okay shape. Yeah. Without it looking too bad. If you... I usually go 5 by 5 with the Instagram yeah. stuff that I'm sending to people, but, you know... Um, but if you occasionally uh, getting bigger, if you have like the different apps with filters and stuff, generally there's something for you know in app purchases. So if you get the yep. free ones, they <laughs> probably crush, they would like crush the resolution of the yep. saved files. So sure. like you can't really do anything with it. Mm -hmm. But then if you like buy it, oh, look, now you can actually like print a photo out of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the collage programs that we use. They had a free one, but it's like, you know, like the highest resolution you're going to get is an 8x10. Yeah, it's like Pig Joiner or some of those you other know, ones. There's, yeah. there's a bunch out there. But yeah. then when you buy it, it's like, oh, you can make this any size you want now. Mm -hmm. um, so generally, if it's something that you really like, it's always better to buy, like, the quote-unquote pro version or whatever, right, yeah. not the light version for the 5 bucks. Right, yeah. You know, if it's something that you would print. Yeah. Is that because of the storage? Is it, or that? Or, no, that's just because they want you to actually pay for it yeah. versus mm -hmm. getting it for free. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, like, I think BMW is going to start charging people monthly to use the yes. seat heaters. Yes. You know, like, I saw that. Anything they can, like, gouge money for. I thought for that was a joke. No. no. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's, yeah. it's sad. It's so stupid. <laughs> uh, but interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I guess everyone wants to be in, like, the... Uh, the what, subscription the business. subscription model. Yeah. 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 God. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So were you, do you got a favorite in there that, everyone, um, that, that anyone should come down and see specifically? Yeah. I mean, are you sick of that wave one? That, no, I mean, you've been looking at that for a while. That one's been on my wall for a long time. <laughs> so someone come down and buy it. Buy it. <laughs> um, so I can make something new. Um, I mean, I like the wave the one a lot. Like, yeah. the, the, the wave one is cool in person because yeah. it's huge mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of like the car downstairs like it's right. huge yep. so it yeah. like takes like it has a presence to exactly it. um i out of everything that's up there probably because it's also the newest stuff is like the portraits are my favorite yeah, yeah. and like the way that wall looks together is awesome yeah, yeah. um i kind of knew what it was going to look like before it went up but like it looked they look really good together mm -hmm. i'm actually pretty psyched about those yeah Do you have good luck with the port that the portraits sell or is that more of a yeah I don't know. Someone come and prove me wrong, but no, no, no one's bought them yet. No, no. I mean, but, I mean, I assume you do well with the, you know, like the landscapes, the bridges, yeah. you know, like. Yeah, the, that sort of stuff sells pretty well. So yeah. the portraits um, are more a, a, like a. They're like a personal project yeah. type thing. And yeah. if someone is moved enough to hang one in their house, I will let them do it. You know, yeah. like, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a lot of the landscape stuff the, the hardest part I found with like the landscape stuff that I do is a lot of it's printed really big mm -hmm. so you have to have like all three things need to fall in place one they want to they wanted enough to spend money on yeah since it's big it's costs a lot of money to frame yeah you know and then the third part is you need a wall big enough to hold it yeah um, you know a 40 by 60 frame in a lot of houses is too big yeah um you need a big wall you need a dedicated it. wall for that something right. that size yeah. you know it's like uh if you go to best buy and you look at a tv and you're like oh this 70 inch tv is awesome and then you get it home and it's the size of the wall in the living room you're like, oh, it might be i'll make it fit yeah, some people like that. i'll always <laughs> make it fit but like <laughs> tv not a problem yeah <laughs> i just i don't need this bureau room, so <laughs> i didn't measure first uh, yeah. i don't use this window very often it can go in front of it <laughs> Yeah, it's a little different for, you know, a portrait piece or a, you know. Right. It's supposed to kind of make a room complete, you know. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, and, like, the the portrait work, I just I just enjoy it. I yeah. Like, 
you know, I would hang it. I would hang it at my house. Yeah, yeah. it's very striking it's when you walk up the steps. Like I said, it definitely cool captures your eye on that one. Like I said, mm-hmm. like I love your other stuff. Like I love the the waterfalls. I love those mm-hmm. two. I love the the island parting through the fog with the little you know the building on there. You were telling me about oh, the that Doctor one. Island, the Doctor there. Island one there. Yeah, Cohasset. Yeah. Hull. Um, yeah, and then your your nature ones. You know, the deer, the coyote. I love those. But there's something about those those portrait pieces. Like I said. That one that just like it struck something to me. I was like, I've seen this for so long. I just, you know, made me think of that that one picture. It's I just like pulling like a powerful personality. Out of people. Exactly. And I feel like that does that pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in different in different forms, like everybody up there has a different feel to it. There's a different attitude with each of right. those pictures, you know, that they, that's coming across with each of those ones, you know. A lot of it's annoyed because they have to sit there and it takes <laughs> a long time to take one photo. You know, there's a lot of setup involved. Um, Give me happy. Like, no, that's annoyed. Give me happy. <laughs> yeah, and like, since it's all on film, it's a lot of setup for something very anticlimactic right sure. afterwards because it's like, oh, let's see how it came out. It's like, hey, you going to wait. I don't... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll let you know in a week and a half. Yeah, like, <laughs> I won't even know how it came out. Just cross my fingers and hope it did. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to wait that long because I do have a photo of that. So <laughs> it's very true. It's very I don't true. have to send them anywhere. All right. Well, cool. I think that's going to wrap things up for uh, this interview. Uh, Sweet. You know, thanks for joining us and giving us the time to you know go over all these things, pick your brain on a few of these things that we're still quite not uh, sure on ourselves here. Yeah. Oh, certainly. You know, probably we'll have, have to have him back. You know, we'll keep you coming back. For part recurring, three. Recurring guest, Sean Goss. Hey, I'll yeah. be around. Maybe I'm when, not we, going anywhere. when we get things, uh, you know, nailed down, we can always transition into, you know, trying to make things educational or, you know, we'll maybe have to discuss dive the, the, in deep into some of the pieces of yours. Discuss well, the IG cool show, too. We get, like, discuss um, which one sold. Yeah. You know, I would, I would always be up for, like, uh, talking with another artist as well yeah yeah we can do a um, crossover that'd be great yeah you know, debates like, debates are always fun the, the, the great de- the debate between film and digital you know yeah. i mean yeah. i shoot both so i can't <laughs> <laughs> you've seen both sides of the thing but i know it definitely makes sense but uh no that's great well so like i want to thank everybody for uh listening in today too and uh hopefully you'll turn in for part three when we have part three come out yeah well, always, always good to see you, Sean, and uh, I'm sure that, you know, we'll probably see you tomorrow. You know? Yeah, most likely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. See ya!